So in this video we're going to look at how to identify the domain of a square root function using the equation. Uh, we've already looked at identifying the domain of functions from the graphical evidence. We're going to switch gears now over the next series of videos uh, to put ourselves in a position not to rely on the graphical evidence and to be able to do it analytically or using algebra skills. However, here's a, here's a square root function, g of x equals the square root of 2x minus 3, and I have included the graph of this function for us to look at. So based on the work that we did earlier, when we look at this graph, we should say, hey, it looks like the graph is starting at around 3 halves, or 1, one and a half, and then it looks like it's going towards infinity because the GeoGebra graphs, our, our default is to interpret the, interpret the end of the graph as having an arrow on it and then recognizing that it has a horizontal component that's going towards positive infinity. So the graphical evidence that we're looking at here suggests that our input variable x needs to live on the interval from 3 halves to positive infinity. So this is something that we've already done. What we want to do is identify how would we come up with that same result uh, analytically without having to look at or rely on the picture. So the big idea is this. We have already seen that if we take the square root of a negative number that we get a complex result. And there's going to be a general agreement for the remainder of the course that when we're talking about a function's domain that we're wanting to restrict ourselves to real number values and we want to exclude input values for the function that are going to generate complex number or complex results that are not real numbers. So what we want to do then is say, hey, I don't want to get an i in my answer. I don't want the complex unit to be in my answer. And so what I need is for the stuff underneath the square root, I need it to be non-negative. Because if I get a negative number under the square root, I get a complex number result that isn't a real number. So what we do is use an inequality to describe what we need to happen. We need the stuff 2x minus 3 that is under the square root symbol to be non-negative. And to be non-negative means, means that we need to be greater than or equal to 0. Any real number that is greater than or equal to 0 is non-negative. So we grab what's underneath and we say, hey, we need the stuff underneath the radical sign to be greater than or equal to zero, and then we just solve the inequality. So adding three to both sides, we get two x is greater than or equal to three, and then dividing both sides by two, we get x is greater than or equal to three halves, and then if we were asked to put the answer in interval notation, which will be the most common, uh, common thing that we're asked to do, for x to be greater than or equal to 3 halves, we would say x is an element of the interval, closed interval because of the equal sign, the closed interval that starts at 3 halves, and to be greater than 3 halves means that we're going towards infinity. So this algebraic or analytic approach to finding the domain matches with what we would get by analyzing the graph of the function. Again, the key here is that we want the stuff under the radical to be non-negative. It has to be greater than or equal to zero.